Hello and welcome to this new series on HTML5 gaming. My name is Samuel Asher Ravello. I am a pro game developer with over 20 years of game dev experience. Most of the last decade or so, I've been using Unity exclusively for all professional work as a dev and as a game dev educator. And I have been playing around with lots of other engines, including the whole HTML5 world very recently. My career experience includes shipping titles for iOS, Android, PC, and courses about programming, architecture, CI, CD, unit testing, best practices, things like that. I'm relatively new to HTML5 gaming and I'm exploring a lot. And as I make progress with videos like this one, articles, repos, tips, I'm gonna put everything on this one URL. So if you watch these videos out of order or you come across one of my articles that points you to this link, you'll be able to see all the rest of the content. It's the central hub. Let's look at an overview of HTML5 gaming. The games industry overall is tremendously large and growing fast. It's among the most popular leisure time activities, particularly for younger consumers. And the game development industry has experienced tremendous growth over the last 20 or 30 years. Particularly with the launch of smartphones, we've seen a whole new market in the last 15 years. The game development industry earns more annually than all movies, TV, and books combined. So in this series, I wanted to explore together and share things as I learn. So HTML5 is a particular sub-genre of game development, and it's also a place where you would play your games, particularly through the browser. Uh, the core architecture is using HTML5 for the structure, CSS for the styling, and JavaScript for the logic. JavaScript has a second flavor called TypeScript, and I'll mention that in the future as well. Um, one of the core rendering technologies has been WebGL, and we'll talk a little bit about WebGPU as well. And the Canvas and Web Audio, local storage, these are some of the different subsystems of the technology that you can tap into. Here's some of the benefits of HTML5 gaming. There's no installation required, so you can reach a really broad market. They don't necessarily have to visit a app store and download it for their phone, although that's possible. They can play games directly through the browser. So you get a broader audience. There's lower costs because you're using a lot of open source tools and technologies built around a long history of web dev. There's a lot of accessibility you have because your users don't necessarily need much except a fairly modern browser, that's it. Uh, you can also ship updates to your users anytime you want without necessarily needing them to visit a store like the iOS or Android uh, app stores. Uh, and you can also integrate with a lot of other technologies. What I've noticed in my playing around with HTML5 so far, and it's really new for me, is that you're able to tap into the whole build system and topology of editors, everything that's been creating particularly websites, then web apps for the last 20 years. Under the hood, HTML5 games are rendered using WebGL historically and more recently with WebGPU. So let's talk about these two technologies. Around 2011, the WebGL standards were developed and this was a way for within your browser for you to tap into some higher powered graphics. Now, as a game player, I traditionally think you get better experience outside the browser, like a game dedicated downloadable and playable directly through your Windows or your Mac operating system. But this power, particularly within WebGPU, your browser can now access the same functionality as your core computer. And as that's been opened up since around 2020, we've seen really fast rendering speeds possible. And I, I will give you a demo of that in the series, and we'll talk a bit more about this difference. It's pretty recent at WebGPU's there, and it's not as easy to reach a, your whole wide audience with WebGPU, but it's coming around and becoming more and more popular. And another bit of tech I wanted to talk about is that you're doing the majority of your programming in the HTML5 world with JavaScript. And JavaScript has a second flavor called TypeScript. So JavaScript's been around since the 90s. It's widely supported across all the web browsers that are out there. TypeScript is newer, coming out around 2012 is what I found, and it's a superset of JavaScript, and it has tremendous improvements for the quality of life, including static type definitions and a better experience around creating object-oriented programming. And as I mentioned, I've been particularly interested in HTML5 as one more place to make great games, particularly with the maturity of TypeScript, which gives such a better quality of life as a developer. 
and also web GPU, which is able to render much better stuff. Uh, and that increases the quality of life for your player and has that better output. So let's talk a little bit about HTML5 within the gaming industry. It continues to be the minority of commercial games launched. Uh, this pie chart here makes it look like HTML5 is almost half of the market. I'm not sure how accurate that is. It depends on the source you look at and kind of what subgenre, what area of gaming you're looking at. Um, but the point is, it is not yet the majority. Still, most of your games are non-HTML5. Uh, but what I can see is that the HTML5 gaming launches per year has been growing rapidly. So just over the last decade, remember we've seen innovations like TypeScript and WebGL coming out in the last decade or so. And I think those are greatly helping this industry and in, in the adoption. Also, those things are being unlocked within the browser. So now a game in the browser can access much more of the local system hardware and be able to do a lot more things that you'd want, like saving local state, connecting with game pads, stuff like that. Now I've mentioned a couple times so far that HTML5 is playable through your browser. That's not the only spot, but that's a lot of the places that many people find HTML5 content. Uh, we see most of it is played through mobile browsers and desktop browsers. Uh, also social media platforms, which might also be through the browser, but connected in with uh, social media. Uh, and then game portals, which might be a website that has an arcade of many smaller games. Within social media, Facebook is by far where people are playing the most games. I think that's a couple reasons. One, starting about a decade or so ago, Facebook opened up the APIs about what you're able to do within a given Facebook page. And that included the technology of Canvas, which enabled the gaming that we're using for HTML5. Um, a lot of these other platforms as well, one of the major drivers of HTML5 technology is what are called playable ads. So advertising revenue is a huge part of the online gaming experience. And one of the ways that you can make money is by showing video ads, which are not interactive. But these interactive HTML5 playable ads can have a lower file size. And because they're interactive as well, perhaps enabling you to drag and drop and play along for a 10 or 20 second gaming experience gives you a better taste of what the end product is that you're going to be getting into. Now I came across a recent statistic of some of the top sites used for HTML5 games. I do recognize a lot of these brands, but I think of them from a long time ago. So as a game player, I don't know if these are still places where people are going, but this is where I've found a lot of HTML5 content is purportedly living. Congregate, mini clip, and addicting games were places where I used to play a lot of flash games and as that technology faded out and browsers became more powerful, you're able to do a lot of the same mini game experiences with HTML5 technology. So if that's where we're playing the games, then how are we as game developers making the games? Well, generally you would work on top of a game engine. A game engine is the bunch of code on top of which you script your individual game and the engine takes care of things like rendering, taking input, playing audio, all that great stuff. It can also have some architectural paradigms around what is a game object or an entity in the world or a sprite, and you build your game using these building blocks. So uh, starting with Pixie.js and Phaser, I think those are two of the biggest ones that are out there. Uh, and Pixie.js is one I'm particularly interested to investigate more. Uh, then on the kind of second uh, grouping here, 3.js and Matter.js are particular subsystems where there's some strengths. So 3.js is a complete JavaScript framework for making games around 3D stuff, because a lot of what we're talking about is 2D. Matter.js is about creating physics within a 2D gaming platform. And you can mix matter with something like Pixie, for example, I've seen demos of that, and it's something I'm looking forward to getting into. Uh, when I compare all of this to something like Unity, for example, which is on this slide, I'll mention it in a second, Unity is the game editor. It comes with all of the subsystems you'd need and it's a more complete cohesive package. What I'm seeing in some of this JavaScript world is that the community embraces an ecosystem and you may need to step into Pixie.js, but download a community-based tool for something that I was used to being kind of first party supported. So with Pixie, it does not offer any physics, for example. Now I'm not a Pixie expert in this case, so maybe some of the things that I'll be talking about in this series uh, are not necessarily the best up-to-date information, but as I'm learning it, uh, I, you know, I'm trying to see what the strengths and the pros and cons are on each of these. 
Uh, other ones I wanted to mention, uh, Play Canvas and Defold both have editors, tools that you open up to do, let's say, level design, whereas Pixie does not. I'm not sure if Phaser does, but Pixie does not. So in some of these, you don't have the traditional environment that you open up to do level design, to cobble together your 2D or 3D world. And I'm interested to see kind of how you solve those challenges with a disparate set of tools. In a way, what I'm learning here is that when you choose an HTML5 gaming stack, you would choose a few different tools, perhaps from completely different companies or organizations, and bring them together to make your stack where I think in the Unity world or even in the Godot world, more of your needs are met within the one tool that you're opening up. Uh, I mentioned Godot and Unity here on this slide because both of those, while they're not HTML5 native game uh, engines, they do export to the format. And what I've seen in my playing around with Unity over the last years is it used to export something that didn't do everything Unity could do, and it didn't take the best advantage of the browser, and it probably wasn't competing with these other tools on low file size, fast loading content. But if you have a legacy of experience or a team that's educated and, and experienced in using Unity, for example, you're able to at least export some types of projects from Unity and being able to play them in the browser. I think over time, we'll see, I hope, even more of Unity functionality playable through the browser and having Unity be a more compelling choice. But as far as I can tell, it is not yet competing with these other tools uh, as far as the quality and the low file size of the output. I'm not sure how Godot compares to Unity in the same space, but I would say both of them are not HTML5 based, but they do have an export path. Uh, along the bottom, some honorable mentions there of some different ones. And I found a lot of this great info on the link there. I'll put a link below. And this just lists out all the game engines in the world. I'm actually really happy to find that link there because I do this kind of research and presentations all the time. And I just happened to find this uh, recently. So again, another shout out. Check out this link here for all the articles, repos, and tips. And every video that I do in this series will be put there as well. Thanks for coming along. I'm excited to see all, what opportunities there are in HTML5 to take my existing skill set and translate things over. In a lot of ways, it's a way to get projects smaller file size, delivered faster, and still with some impressive power. We'll see in some of the next videos that I do some benchmarking about getting WebGL and WebGPU demos done in the browser. And while I have a fairly beefy computer that can run modern games, being able to see this awesome performance inside the browser is really eye-opening. And I imagine there is a future when what is played in your browser is just as compelling as what is played outside the browser. And these are the technology stacks that are really gonna help you get there. I'm available for remote contract hire as both a Unity game dev and a game dev instructor. Thanks.